We are backstage, the special edition, We Sound Crazy, Black Music Honors Edition. You sound crazy. I don't sound crazy. <laughs> I'm with oh, one. That's what the show's called? That's what the show's called. We sound okay. crazy. So, oh, I thought you were. So, you see, she comes on this show and it just takes over fully. You, I mean, you guys, she, she's an amazing manager. Let's start there. Well, thank human, you. Human being. Let me start there. Oh, thank you. I've known her for years. She's a TV producer. She, I'm waiting on a chance for us to do something together. I know. That's so crazy that we haven't. Ladies you and gentlemen. You partner with absolutely everyone. Mona Scott Young is in the building. I can't get a deal, a Phil Thornton collaboration. Meanwhile, he partners with everyone and anyone. Understand this. How did this relationship no, come No, we're not, not going to do this. Like, no, I, I, no, I would love to hear. How did this just, relationship just come Just a short How version. How did this relationship Do you even remember? I do remember. Do you remember? I don't. That's why I'm asking Say. you. Didn't I just ask See, him I, if I you just... remembered? I don't. How did we meet Phil? Little Mo in the early 2000s. Oh, my God. I just saw Little Mo in the She's audience. She's here. She is here. You were managing her, working with her? We were working together when, during your violated days. You and Claudine. I were? Yes. <laughs> I was here. It's been a long time. <laughs> yeah, that's a, it's been a long time. <laughs> so, so, no, so that's you know what, what that was so our crazy. initial touch point. And, my, then we, you know, and then years later, our, our mutual friend, Tracy Christian. Oh, yes. Reconnected um, us. Reconnected us. Wonderful. And when you were develop, literally developing Love & Hip Hop. Okay. Me, you, That's and Atari Turner took a call. Do you yes. remember that call? Do you remember now that call? It's all coming back to me. Yes. You know what it is? Everything that happened in my music life mm -hmm. you forget feels it. like it was it's, actually yes. a lifetime ago. Wow. <laughs> it's been, you know, like an amazing blessing, though, yeah. to have experienced success and yes. a whole, you know, kind of renewed path in life doing television now. But it, it feels like it was eons yeah. ago. But, I, but do you have a, a preference now? Do you miss music? Or are you like, I'm mm. more TV? You know what's so funny? Now that I'm running around with Missy again, you know, she's doing shows and stuff, there's a little pang of nostalgia, but then not so much. Because then all of the headaches start coming, and then I'm like, oh, yeah, that's right. Now it's all coming back to me, you know? <laughs> do you remember the moment that you came in contact with Missy and you said, you know what, this lady is a star and she's going to make history. Oh, absolutely. I've told that story often because it actually, there were two touch points, right? Okay. The first one was when my late partner, Chris Lighty, called one day and he was like, look, there's this girl, uh, Diddy just put her on this record. Oh, at the time, was he Diddy? He was Puffy. He's Puffy. He yeah. put her on this record, right? I need you to go find her, mm -hmm. right? And it was the Gina Thompson song. Yeah, yeah the things you do. And I tracked her down and she was in a hotel room. Mm -hmm. And I remember getting put all the way up. I found out what her code name was, you know, and stuff. So I got put all the way through to her room. And she picks up the phone and I'm like, hi, you don't know me, but I'm Mona Scott, you know, at the time, yeah. not Mona Scott Young yet. And um, basically offered this girl who mm -hmm. no one knew who the heck she was a deal because, you know, we had violated records at the time and it was a part of Def Jam. Yeah. And anybody in their right mind would want to be part of that. Of she was like, no. Wow. She was like, no, I'm good. Thank you so much, though. Thanks for reaching out. Yeah. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> That's so then fast forward, probably, I don't know, six months later, and at the time we had, you know, Busta who was signed to Electra, yeah, yeah. Sylvia Rohn, and Sylvia says, um, you know, I've got, I signed this artist and I think he'd be perfect for her. I want to introduce you guys. And then it was like the same girl who cracked my face when I called her and I was like, oh, great. I was like, no, trust me. I tried her already. She's not checking. Yeah. She was like, no, no, no. I'm telling you, I think you'd be perfect for her. I'm going to send you to Palm Springs, Florida because uh, Missy was on Lilith Fair. She's like, I'm going to send you out there. Just spend the weekend with her, vibe with her, mm -hmm. and it'll be great, right? So I go out there on a Thursday. Thursday comes and goes. Friday. Friday comes and goes, Saturday, and every day, by the way, I'm calling her peoples, right? And I'm just like, hi, yeah, this is Mona, Sylvia sent me, I'm sitting in the hotel, let me know when she wants to connect, you know, we can have breakfast, yeah. we can, yeah. they were like, yeah, I will we'll let her know. <laughs> right? So then, so then finally I called Sylvia, I was like, Sylvia, this is a waste of my time. This girl, you know, I've been sitting here this whole weekend, nothing's happening. She says, no, let me talk to her. So then Sylvia calls me back. You're going to go with her to the show tonight. Mm -hmm. She's going to, you know, you're going to ride with her in the car. That's going to be your chance. Get in there with her, right? So we get in the car, and we're in the back of the limo, and we're driving to the, the venue. And Missy, at the time, was um, her legal, her lawyer was a woman by the name of Louise Louise West, West yeah. Louise West, yeah. So she's talking to Louise on the phone. She's like, yeah, she right here. Mm-hmm. Now, I don't know why Sylvia sent this lady over here, because I don't want no manager. Mm-hmm. No, nah, she right here. <laughs> wow. And the whole time I'm sitting right there like, huh? 
then we pull into the venue and there's like all this paparazzi and people around and the whole time she's on the phone she you know at the time she had those mm-hmm. lollipops she yes. was always eating yeah. the lollipops yes. and yeah. chewing the gum and yes. stuff and all of a sudden i saw this badass mm-hmm. shrink mm-hmm. right and i was like oh so this is the real her and what yeah. a lot of people don't know and you know well mm-hmm. is she's probably the shyest she really is most introverted yes. i call her hermit yeah. person on the planet right and then i realized like the cameras, the people, mm-hmm. the pop, you know, all very intimidating to her. So, of course, I kicked into high yeah. gear, you know, got out the car, got the, mm-hmm. you know, everybody all together. Okay, we need to clear out the room. I'm going to need to, yeah. you know, uh, create a private space for the interviews. Let me see those questions. Mm-hmm. Okay, nope, she's not doing this, 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 this. I went back over to the car, wrapped on the window. She mm-hmm. rolled it down. I was like, here's the questions. Yeah. I've got it all set up for you. They're ready whenever you are. Have a nice life. And I started to wow. away from the car, and she was like, yo, Mona, hold up. I want to holler at you. And that was 26 years ago. <laughs> wow. So, will we get a, I'm switching complete gears for Missy. Oh, really? I'm going to reality TV I right now. I thought that was a great segue. It was a great. It, like, no, it was great. Gave him this great it's, opening it's great. to it's continue great. going we, down this we, got, we sound crazy. Oh, that, yeah. yeah, you do. See? <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> I want to talk about you as a television producer as well. And I know you're doing scripted television as well. And I just saw, congrats on the announcement, your show with Tay Thank Diggs. Thank you. It's an it's a actual feature, a movie. It's, it's a, a movie. Two, yeah, yeah. It's a multiple wow. part series. It's um, based on this playboy that lived in Atlanta. This guy by the name wow. of, yeah, Lance Herndon, who was like a tech, one of the first guys, like black men in tech, who, yeah. you know, did very, very well for himself. But he was also a notorious philanderer mm. um, and a ladies man. And he messed with the wrong one yeah so it's a pretty good story what prompted the transition from music to tv and film for you like what Mm. was the clincher you know i just personally it was a growth move it was me wanting to explore different areas of you know entertainment of me and my capabilities i did this show with missy in 2005 called the road to stardom so that was kind of like the first little oh wait there's an idea, we put all the pieces together, the idea comes to fruition, much less headaches. Okay, I like mm-hmm. it. You know, so I just wanted to continue exploring that. And at that point also, I had been managing yeah. for a very long time, right? And anybody who's ever managed knows that you are just a incredibly highly paid babysitter, right? No, I'm just, I say that half jokingly because there's a lot of caretaking mm-hmm. that goes into it. And, and I do it like passionately and with love because what I know is that all of those things, all of those contributions, yeah. you know, play a pivotal role in what the mm-hmm. audience and the fans end mm-hmm. up seeing. And, you know, I always feel like, okay, that's my primary directive. See talent must help them reach their full potential, mm-hmm. you know? Um, but I had felt like there were so many things that, I hadn't tapped with my own potential. And television was a medium that I, like I said, found interesting from, you know, my first experience with it. And I just decided to dive in head first without a parachute. I love it. <laughs> so Missy is an honoree tonight for Black Music Honors, but also SWV. SWV. Who you worked with on. Oh, you see how he did that. Yeah. That was a pretty smooth yeah. segue. Very smooth. Exactly. At least he <laughs> so didn't scratch those my that, bumper. For those that don't know, Mona Scott Young, executive <laughs> produced. The Queens of R&B, SWV, and Escape series yes. on Bravo. More than executive produce, because what a lot of people don't know is that I have a physical production services company. Yes. production company. Yes. So when you say executive produce, a lot of people executive produce. She has a full team. She's literally from nuts to bolts, start okay, to finish. I Soup just to wanted nuts. to clarify. Soup to nuts. I'm sorry. Yes. Thank you. You. So, Queens of R&B. You're not wearing socks. I'm not. I have on socks. Oh, you do? Oh, then they slid in. You got on yeah. baby socks. They don't fit. <laughs> <laughs> See, this is, this is what she does. She's a disruptor on the sh- Okay. Isn't this called We Sound Crazy? Yes. yes. Okay. So, Mona. Yes. A lot of drama on this first season. Will we get a second one? I think, you know, that's up to the ladies. It's their story to tell. And I always say that doing reality television is not easy, right? You give so much of yourself and you also leave yourself open to so much, especially, you know, with social media and everyone having direct access to you. So, you know, you look at the comments and you look at the perceived, you know, Mm -hmm. backlash from the interactions that these ladies have had. And it makes it hard. And I understand that. But if they're up for it, hey, I'm game. But I would totally say it's up to them. 
Okay. Good answer. And if not, maybe we do something together. Finally? Finally. All these you had later. a show that was similar. I did, R&B Divas. R&B Divas. Yeah. It was the precursor. It was the precursor. Yeah. The people want to Blaze the trail for you. Blaze the trail, <laughs> but you know, sometimes what comes later is oh. just better, oh. bigger. Oh. Oh. Right? No, but all due respect to that. the trailblazers. <laughs> so, R&B Divas was a great show, yes. by the way. I'd, I'd love to know. So this year... Yes. Celebrating the 50th anniversary of hip hop, yes. you've been instrumental in so many <laughs> moments over the years in in hip hop alone. Can but, we go back but, and uh, talk about that? Listen, like, yes. I just, so yeah. Yeah. I would love to know your first memory, like the first time you were bit by the hip hop bug. Oh wow! You know what? It was probably through dance. Believe it or not, if I'm going to be completely honest, right? I came into hip hop management, music industry through the dance world. I started out um, with a group of sisters who worked at a Broadway dance center called Duntori, and what they did was they taught stage presence, stage moves. They literally had a class called Stage Moves, and what they taught artists how to do was how to hold the mic, don't cuff the mic. You know what I'm saying? How to project to the audience, how to deliver a performance. And I enjoyed that process, and a lot of the music that they, you know, mm-hmm. used for the choreography and for the, you know, the, the classes was hip-hop music. Yeah, yeah. And that led me into working with um, Chris and a lot of the artists that he had, mm-hmm. uh, Black Sheep, um, Warren G, Foxy Brown, early, early days, yeah. um, and a group called The A-Team. And the A, remember The A-Team? Yes. They were signed to Chub Rock, yes. Select Records. Yeah. And The A-Team um, was actually the first group that I started managing because the track masters, yes. who were their producers, Tony Polk. were Tone Polk, mm-hmm. Frank Nitty, yep. wow. and oh shit, Tone Polk, Frank Nitty, and and, and 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 oh, oh, oh Alex, Alex Richburg. I'm so sorry. Yeah. <laughs> so it was interesting with the guys, right? So you had Tone, who was like the lover, lover man, mm-hmm. called himself lover man twice. Um, and he was the rapper. Then you had Polk, who was kind of like the engineer. Mm-hmm. He um, was an architect by trade, mm-hmm. but the technical yeah. person. Then you had Alex, who was a classically trained musician, mm-hmm. right? And then you had Frank Nitti, mm-hmm. who was the streets, yes. who was the hip hop, who was wow. the grime, who was yeah. the the soul of the sound. So those four made up the Trackmasters in the early days. Most people only know Tone and Polk, because yeah. mm-hmm. those are the guys who, you know, um, Stayed with it. But anyway, I started managing the Trackmasters, and that led me to managing the A-Team, which led me to working closely with Chris. And when those guys decided that they were going to go their separate ways and become the two that everyone now knows, um, Chris was making the transition over to Def Jam from Rush and was like, yo, come help me out here you know, while I do this. And I saw a niche because they had all of the talent coming off of Rush, so we formed Violator Management. And the rest is music milestone history. I still have my Violator compilations. You do? Yes. With those caricatures? Yes. It's so funny (laughs) now that I'm in content creation, I look back at that, right? And I'm like, we weren't even consistent with the style of animation, right? Busta had one phase. LL had another one. But you know what I always loved about Violator? And it's a little bit of um, the spirit of what I did with Love & Hip Hop is that it was about the brand. Yes. Right? The artist... They made the brand, they were the heart and soul of the brand, but the brand had its own identity it and it represented something and people knew that they were part mm-hmm. of a community, yeah. right? And even though the talent cycled in and out, mm-hmm. right? Very much like Love and Hip Hop, yeah. we've got the brand, it's yes, a community. It's all about the brand. World. Yeah. But you know, talent can cycle in and out and the brand still survives. Absolutely. You know? Okay, tell me this. You've been a part of so many iconic hip hop moments. Do you have a favorite? An icon? Hip hop. It's so funny. A couple of the iconic moments in my history have celebrated themselves. Are we making too much noise? Fairly? Are we loud? Oh, okay. Um, so, Busta and Janet mm-hmm. and doing that, what's it going to be? Wow. Right? I was telling the story of that because at the time, Nas wanted Janet to do a feature, and I was going up against Steve Stout to get Janet for the Busta feature. Wow. Okay, exactly. So when I ended up, that was one of my first kind of like, Mm -hmm. I did that shit. I can rock with the boys in this. Don't fuck. 
you know, can we curse on the same thing? Yeah, of course. Don't yeah. fuck with me, you know. Because you sound crazy. I remember Steve coming to me being like, "I, right, you won that one. Yeah. You got that. Yeah. You know what yeah. I'm saying? So that was like a great moment. And then even with LL, I remember I was, you know, dating somebody who lived in um, Cherry Hill, New Jersey. And that was a hop skip from Philly. Right. And I met his the guy's friends who were boys to men, developed a friendship with yeah. them. Then fast forward, we're doing Violator. We've got LL. He wants to do Hey Lover. And he's like, yeah, we're never going to get boys to men and I was like actually I know them <laughs> you know what I'm saying like, you know everybody so well no but back then yeah. you're talking about what 96 yeah. Yeah, 96, yeah. you know what I'm saying um, so those are the moments because when I think about how those songs you know yeah. impacted the culture mm-hmm. and the music and you know what people know and love mm-hmm. and have nostalgia around yeah. and knowing that I played a smidgen of a role. Oh, more than a smidgen. More than a smidgen. Yeah. <laughs> but you know, it's like, oh my God, what an amazing life. Yeah. I'm so blessed and grateful. Well, we love you here. We sound crazy. Mona Scott Thank Young. You. Thank you. When you're in Nashville, you. we want to dedicate a whole episode yes. just to celebrate you. you we want to hear the stories. Yeah. You we do? Hear the, yes. Yeah. You I w- just want to hear me run my mouth. Yeah. <laughs> Listen. <laughs> you know? I want to hear it. I grew, up, I grew up on all this stuff, so it's just like, it's really full circle for me to amazing. amazing thank you so yeah. much I enjoyed this this is great it started out black as me just fucking with Phil ended up being <laughs> a really good interview we sound crazy black music honors Mona Scott Young we love Peace. you thank you thank you <laughs>